Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for July 19th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Good evening, council, citizens, and administration. Mr. Bridge. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Ms. Burner, can you call roll, please? Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Absent. Councilman Rodewald. Absent. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Five members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Vice Mayor Cook. <laughs> again, if you'll bow your heads. Our Heavenly Father, once again, we come before you to do the business for the citizens of this great city. Again, guide us in all of our thoughts, our deeds. And with that, please wrap your arms around our first responders, our sheriff's deputies, our EMTs, our firefighters. With that, we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Moving on to action on minutes. We've got a handful we need to go through here tonight, so bear with us. We uh, need action on the minutes for the work session on uh, July 6, 2021. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Glenn. Okay, give me one second, please. Thank you, thank you. So we are, you said July? Uh, July 6, 2021, work session. And the first was Eggleston, second was Grimm. Okay. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. <clears throat> Councilwoman Okowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. All those minutes are accepted, five, zero? We're moving on, we need a motion to accept the uh, regular, se uh, regular session council minutes for uh, July 6, 2021. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Those minutes are accepted five zero. All right, and moving down to minutes that we need to square it away for uh, uh, iPad Zoom training for online meetings, uh, which was um, 427. Yeah, 427, 2020. Mm -hmm. Second. I just didn't second on this because you realize not this one right now. Right. Oh, well, and I apologize. I totally missed doing those, and Mr. Bridge caught them, and then I thought. But I think back, that was right in the COVID on Zoom. I probably saw Zoom training. I don't need another Zoom training, and no didn't go and totally forgot about it. So we are, this one is the 427, 427 correct? Yep. Yeah. All right, and my first was A, <coughs> and second was Nokowski. Correct. Okay. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Okowski. Yes. Those minutes are accepted 5 0. And then moving on to the minutes for April 30, 2020, iPads and training meetings. Eggleston, Okowski. And um, Mayor Lowry, you were not at this one, so you'll want to abstain. All right. Thank you. Second. Nowakowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Abstain for being absent. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Those minutes are accepted for zero one. And we on to Mayor's Court discussion on April 12, 2021. 
Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nokowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 5 0. Two more. Uh, CBDG potential projects discussion on 6 14 2010. Motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any discussion? Councilwoman Nokowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Groom? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 5 0. And then the last one a minute for ARP potential projects on 62820. Okay. Ms. Eggleston with the motion, Ms. Nowakowski with the second. Okay. Any discussion? Any more? Okay. Okay. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Those minutes are accepted by zero. Mr. Mayor? Sir? I move that we amend the agenda by adding the Council Review Committee uh, to communication. Council? Second by Mr. Uh, Ms. Eggleston. Sorry. Motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Ms. Eggleston. Any questions or discussion before vote? When you're ready. Okay. Please. Councilman Nogowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That motion is accepted 5 0. All right. Thank you very much. So we are now down to communications number 6 9 item. And tonight we have uh, most of our uh, Charter Review Committee here Mr. Paul, Mr. Griffith, and Ms. Kathy Lake. So, um, we were discussing a little a little bit before you guys have walked in about the uh, charter review, and I guess there were some questions or a lot of what was brought to you, Mr. Grimm, with, uh, I guess, direction, direction, uh, and some questions you guys have had. So, uh, I haven't seen a lot of the questions, so I don't know if you guys had questions for us that you'd like to go over, or uh, if you guys are just kind of here to listen. Uh, but, Are you okay with that? Or I can read oh, it if you want. I just got to find it. Okay. All right. So it says, uh, hello, Mr. Bridge. This is from Donning Hall. It would appear it would be pro proper protocol. Would you be able, if it, I'm sorry, if it would be proper protocol, would you be able to incorporate the following message to council for the upcoming council meeting? If you believe there's a better way to pass this information to council, please let me know. On July 14th, 2021, the Charter Review Committee met at Lee's Famous Recipe in New Carlisle and conducted our first meeting. Committee members present were Kathy Wright, Pat Kraybacher, Scott Griffin, and Don Hall, with Ian Meadows absent. Following, following introductions, we discussed individual goals and a course of action to begin our review process. Prior to this meeting, committee members reviewed the current charter and council meeting slash work session meeting dated July 6th, 2021. During the discussion and best courses of actions, it was agreed upon by all members present to request that the council provide general guidance prior to initiating our review. Specific area guidance requested are, but not limited to, current city values, current mission statement, a city immersion brief. We ask this can be, conducted, be conducted in executive session and our work session with the council and any city personnel and or staff relevant to our charge of performing a charter review. We thank you for our selection and look forward to working with council in administration of this critical task mm -hmm. for the city of New Carlisle. Respectfully, Don Hall, Pat Craybecker, Scott Griffith, Kathy Gray, and Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. That
You guys, if I remember hearing that right, you guys want to have a, a sit down with that one, correct? Is that, is that what I heard they asked for an executive session, correct? And I don't know if we can do that in an executive session. Yeah, I think it has to be an open session since it's, you know, it's not Absolutely. Yeah, and I did speak with Yeah, I would agree. Would that be something that we would be able to uh, ask you to do is to put out on the social, on the city's Facebook page that for another applicant for the charter review? For yeah. Do you guys have five? Yeah, we do have five. We can have more than five, though, I think. Okay. Can we pull the charter up? We legally specify. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Pull the charter. No, yeah, you're numbers. right. I don't <laughs> think you would legally, I don't think you want to put that out there. It's no less than five. Well, Hold on. If it says no less, that changes the game. It says no less than five. Yeah, because there's been more on there than five. It doesn't mean it was done correctly. Yeah, no less than five. It's under that, 11. It says 11, no less than five. Yeah, yeah you can have 11 it. Yep. 11 point. Yep. 11.04. So another member? No, just to put it up, we're seeking charge review members? Just to cut off the amount. Yeah. Right. We realize that we possibly have split you know, positions, but we don't have to. So that's why I don't think it's necessary to come back. Would you like a motion for that, sir? No. One thing, Mr. Mayor, one thing that we talked about in the work session, uh, having a retreat where we sit down and work on it with the future of the city. We don't want to do that with an election coming up in three seats next year. So after the election, uh, we'll be looking at uh, January or February to accomplish that. Uh, that would be an open meeting. Uh, we would be more than welcome to attend. Uh, that is already. Uh, I mean, if, if you guys have reviewed this, when we all are here as the new council and have some points that you think need to be addressed, yeah. bring them up. This is our town. So right. This town is not our So we, we will need to be actively involved in the council. Right.
for the best discourse. But you're, but you're wanting what more or less individuals want to see changes. What are the thoughts that are what they would like to see, correct? Well, I think that's just moving forward. I want to have Well, we could set up a work session. To, uh, you know, whatever, whatever. I know you guys are all just as busy as the next. One. So, um, when would you like to give me a, give me an idea of when you would want to set them up? A week, two weeks? How far up? A week or so? You make something like that, Mr. Bridge. Um, I'm going to interrupt, but whenever you guys are done, I do want you to circle around. So, I just want to make sure that you're on the same page with what you're actually reviewing. It's not the, it's, you understand it's just the charter, just, just, just this small document. It's not all the things we have to consider. Yeah, I understand something. Okay, gotcha. Unfortunately, it does talk about all the different branches and sections within our government. Gotcha. And, and how there's a form that's like, you're not as a city manager, yeah. um, that would be something that I would have to do. Yeah. Um, but I think you're right, there's some things that are really important to understand that you need 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 to Okay, so today's the 19th. You want to just go one week from today on the 26th, or what? The following week, which is what works best for you guys. Evening, mornings, what would you like? Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to have to do that. Okay. Well, it would have to be, uh, we'd have to, we'd have to definitely have to get it in the paper, but I'm saying, can we set that up without a, we can't set it up without a vote during the council meeting, right? There's also, we have to, we have to know for legal ad purposes, too. Right, that's what I'm saying, but I, you know, if he was, for just example's sake, if he was to email you tomorrow and say, how about this day and time, we have to be. Oh, I couldn't make that on behalf of the council. That's what without I'm saying. Without knowing, yeah. It has to be voted on in the. Yeah, so so if we didn't do it today, we would have to wait till August. the next council meeting, which is fine by me, but if you want to get started sooner. I have an idea. Does council have availability for next Monday? If it's at 5 30, 6 o'clock, I gotta see if I'm available. Yeah, I can I can make anything work. I mean, because like let's just let's just set it up because if I can't come to that one, there's other things on the charter you guys can talk about that doesn't just set, to me. set it up tentatively. Well, I can get your and then base off his email already know your guys is available does that make sense so if he's wanting to do it on monday the 26th so another that which okay so they look are you looking next week i think the goal would be that we could make a lot of stuff yes yeah, sooner the better next two weeks So why don't we just start work sessions at 5.30, as opposed to 6. That would give time for Mr. Meadows to get from wherever he's going from 5. Buy us an extra half an hour. Um, meet on an off council meet if we have to. But I think we have an hour dedicated, an hour and a half, for the work session. Because um, what's coming up to us, and then we have to cooperate because we've got CIP coming in, but we can have a meeting on a Monday about CIP. We can't. Normally we incorporated that into the work session. Mm -hmm. um, but it's always, in my opinion, best to add to what we already have as opposed to making a new one unless you have to have to. 
So our next meeting is, let's see, that would be oh, on, the, August, so. on the second. Mr. Griffith, would that work for you at 530 on the second? Sure. Is that okay with you guys? Sure. You need minimum three. Are you guys okay with waiting until the second? Okay. So is this going to be like a joint work session between, or is this going to be a council work session with part with the charter review commission under committees? I mean, under communication. I think it's just going to be an extended work session with them. Uh, yeah, if you want to call it joint, we can do that. So we need to do the legal end for the work session. Put them in the joint. By yeah. by joint. You're the you are an extension of city council. The news are public meetings. They have to be advertised. So if you need to notify someone uh, in the meeting. Yes, um, more than two. More than two of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's typically a 48-hour window, so like if you would email me on a Monday, the ad's not going to run as early as it would be Wednesday. So you couldn't meet until after that. And that's also dependent on how many other legal ads they try to get into the first month or so. So it could be like really that Wednesday would be that, that next Thursday with the legal ads for the kind of thing. If you just want to email me that, I can send it off to Emily as far as when you want to meet. Um, because I can do the legal ads too, so if you send it to me, I'll just take her out of it and just do the legal ad myself. It's really an email and be done with it. I just emailed her today for the parking record one actually. So um, I don't, and please don't, what I'm about ready to say, it's not negative, or I'm just doing my job, but I will have to report that meeting to the state of Ohio because they didn't meet without publicizing it. Lack of knowledge doesn't mean it's okay. Uh, but they, when they do our audits, they look at the minutes, they read all that stuff, so it's always better to self-report when they get caught. Um, I'm not saying anything's going to happen, but at least we let them know before they yeah. found out. It won't be the first time it's happened, you know. Um, so, but I will have to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. So, can... Um, your guys' permission. I may already have it. I know I've got a couple of you guys' emails. Can we, can we get, um, can you send out your other emails or contact info so I can send them any info that they may need? I don't have the email group set up with them all, but I think I have. I, that's all. I can reach. I, I know most of them. And then the only one I probably don't have is Mr. Meadows. Okay. I have hats. I have, yeah, that's easy to make. I'm just trying to my head think about who I don't have. But when Ian applied, didn't he put his email address on that charter application? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, then that's the last one. Well, then yeah. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give it to them. They've, I'm sure they've got that. <laughs> Never mind. Thank you. Well, what it is is it's you know you can't conduct business in the email, so mm -hmm. you can't you know you can't send out a group email to the rest of them and say hey do you think we should do this? Um, yeah, I can't. I don't know the example. Well, Robin. Right. You can't. Yeah. You, you, know, you can say hey. Um, yeah, you just can't, you can't basically, you just can't conduct any business in the if that makes sense. You can't say, hey, I'm thinking about this on section 4.3 right. to give replace give me this word with that. What do you guys think of it? Right. You, that's got to be done in an open meeting. Right, but if we're like discussing the like, status of our meeting, we send a group email to you. So we need to do a home record of all the meetings that we're going to do. Well, once we get the, yeah, at the, at the next meeting on uh, the next one that we're working on, since it'll be public. Then you got you could set up a meeting there that way it's done publicly, and then from there on out, if you guys got your first meeting set up, then just like us, you set your next meeting in, in public form. Mm -hmm. okay. right, so. I got you. I know how to do it. <laughs> Give me a call. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like we're going to meet at five thirty on the second of August. I got to write that down. Robert. With an extension of the Charter Review Committee joining. Mm -hmm. So five thirty. You need a you need a motion to that probably yeah because okay. it changes so time. A motion by Mr. Grimm to make the August second 
work session start at 5.30 with a joint session with the Charter Review Committee, the second week down the road. Is that any government in the end? Yeah, we'll call it. In? Uh, last Monday. So it's not, in, it's not towards the beginning, right? No, it's just like that. Okay, just make sure we, by chance, I'm going to double scope it. Yep. Second. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That motion is accepted 5-0. All right, thank you very much. So that meeting will be at 530 at the Shelter House, and you guys joining us. Um, is there anything else you guys want to go over before that meeting? Do you have any questions, comments, feedback, answers, all of the I don't know, I think we should probably get some free chicken out of that deal, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> the Dodge and Lee's famous recipe is on the Charter Review Commission. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. It is. We're just keeping, don't do that. We'll, we'll yeah, try. yeah, you're going to get us all in trouble. We're all going to get in trouble. <laughs> Ethics <laughs> Commission. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Sunshine laws and an effort of transparency to improve government, work on behalf of the people. That everything, mm -hmm. everything we do has to be all, pretty much on the mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do you think government's so slow? <laughs> we all the red tape we got to go through. Yeah. <laughs> well, that might be an issue too, but valued over a certain amount. So we're not going to discuss that. But yeah, it's all regulated by powers above us. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, you guys good to go then? All right, um, we're going to get going. If you got, I'm not saying you have to leave, but I know some of you are very busy. <coughs> Scott, uh, so if you need to leave, feel free. You don't have to set through all this board, boredom, but uh, you're also welcome to stay. Mr. Mayor, sure. I'd like to thank you for mm -hmm. stepping out yes. to the plate. Yes, thank you. Volunteering for the work. Yes, thank yeah, I'm you. excited. We even said earlier we got a great group of people, so yeah. thank you for volunteering. Yes. Chicken sandwiches on the set at 5.30 and I'm still asking. That whole bill better be under $4.99. Randy Bridge personally. <laughs> yeah, Randy Bridge personally, not the city. That's all right, I'll buy it for everyone. Send it to me. I was going to say, I think they got his credit card, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Griffith. Uh, redo, you owe me a dollar, so take a dollar off whatever you bill me. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> All right, moving on to the city manager's report. Mr. Bridge, good evening, sir, and I'll hand it over to you. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let me get there real quick here, and we'll begin the city manager report. Uh, but we will start off with a or with our uh, police report, and I think we have Deputy Garment down there today. Hi. It's your time to shine, sir. All right. For the new Carlisle Deputy, for the one that's in the room, that's in the audience, I'm going to call the Council, any questions or comments for Deputy Garland? I agree. Sure. I look close to the intersection of Main and Jefferson. Okay. I have almost been hit a number of times 
keep it running night by night. I'm not looking. Could we have deputies occasionally sit at the intersection, the traffic light? Mainly to remind people, number one, red lights are more than just a suggestion. And yellow lights do not mean ticket or think, I can make it before we start talking. Right? <laughs> I would appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Thank you, Mr. Uh, yeah, just thanks for the report. Um, you, know, uh, you know, 10 felony arrests, you know, that's pretty amazing because, you know, if you were to ask some people that you guys really don't do anything at all. I mean, absolutely nothing. You guys do nothing. So, obviously, uh, they don't pay attention. So, I want to thank you for everything you guys do. Um, uh, for not doing anything, you guys seem to get a lot done. So you're out, there. you're out there. So thank you, thank you to all the deputies and the department as a whole. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garman. Uh, and moving on with the city manager report, our fire chief with the fire and EMS report. Council, any questions, comments from the chief? I do. Sir. Uh, chief Trustee, how about compared to an ideal standard situation, how short are we? Pretty short. Sure. Yeah, I'm sorry. Compared to an ideal staffing situation, how short are we? Right now, we're, I would, I would venture to say right now, I'd like to get six to eight fire trucks or Not at a critical situation, are we? Not critical, but from the late agreements. Basically, we work so well in the area of our county department, uh, the department, the township, the county, the government, the government. What can this council do to help get a few people? Right now, we're going to be looking to find people that are certified and get certified.
Deputy Garman, do you have any free time? Can I be a fireman? <laughs> okay, just check it. One of the things that we're looking at, and we had these discuss one, one good one um, within the past two weeks about moving, how we're going to move our fire and medicine department forward. And we're going to have some tough things to bring the council uh, within the next couple months. Um, as far as keeping that Elizabeth Township contract, um, even as far as putting a, a replacement as opposed to a renewal on the ballot um, and kind of seeing what we can get out of that. I don't want to get too into it now because I don't want to take away from the point of the meeting of what we're here for. Um, but we have been in talks about how we can maintain the level of service that our citizens are used to. Unfortunately, when we say maintain that, that means usually it's going to be a little bit out of pocket. We only have so many options we have with our own current funding. But at the end of the day, we've got a fantastic fire and fire and mess department. And we, do, we need to make sure that sticks around. And you, you may not use it regularly, but when you use it once, it's really good every single funding that you have. So um, Chief has approached me about some things. He's already sitting down and talked with the finance director about some things. And we're going to reconvene again before we come to you guys. But we do have some things that we do want to discuss with you about that department. What, is our, what do we start our, what do we start them out at? And that, a new hire? Is some of that going to be in our in the discussion we could find them Yeah, I thought the rates were higher than that. I think the rates are higher than that. We just recently. We have a new paper rate in our first class, and then we'll raise our paramedics and call it all the time. Gotcha, we're starting to do Oh, yeah, of course, it's part of that. But again, you're getting a cat and mouse game. You can raise yours two bucks, and Bethel Township be just stays the same, and then you got the private companies going and out beating you by two bucks at some point in time. Is that going to be part of what? I mean, is that, is that going to be discussed at the meeting that you're talking about? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. Okay. Well, I, just, I didn't want really to get into too many questions, but you were playing on. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be a top down okay. discussion. I mean, everything. I mean, everything. Okay. I mean, operational procedures, the whole nine yards. You know, another problem we have right now is meeting with private animal services, mm -hmm. and they're paying uh, private animal services to have the Nature of the beast. Chief, we appreciate the update and report. Okay. Thank you. I'm happy. All right, Mr. Williams, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And moving on with the city manager report, our finance director, Ms. Harris, and before she gets started, I just want to let everyone know how much of it was an awesome deal to bring Ms. Harris back because we just we just finished the on-site portion of the audit. And I pulled her off to the side for out of the left and really complimented her on her skill set. And also got pulled to the side from, from the lead auditor, too, who said, you guys have got a fantastic finance director. So, Ms. Harris, without further ado, and I'm putting you on the spot, now uh, have fun with God. your report. <laughs> you know, and I have to say, I'm only as good as my team. And I have some excellent ladies that, in the utility mm -hmm. department and the payroll and income tax and uh, census tax here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're wonderful. Well, so are you, and we appreciate oh, that. Thank you. Yep. It's always good to get on the back side of the audits every year. <laughs> <laughs> so the finance report is for the month of June, and the revenue that we took in for June was $573,117.31. The expenditures for the month of June are $668,967.53.
So our total year-to-date revenue, we have received $4,337,792.17, and our expenses are $3,753,338.72. Our beginning fund balance January 1 was $4,760,000. $36.30, and our ending balance um, as of June is $4,410,936.72. The uh, bank reconciliations are all there and balanced. We did have a $15 adjustment. Other than that, they are completely um, good. And I also wanted to report that our American Rescue Fund, we did get registered online. And we got our notice on June 15th that within 10 days we should be receiving our first half. And it is um, quite a bit lower amount than what they originally had told us, but it will be $291,626.95. Uh, any questions? You said the first, that's this year's payment? Yes. Yeah. And then the second will be next year? It will be the same amount next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And we would like a motion to approve Mrs. Harris. Move to approve the report. Motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Ms. Agerston. Grimm Agerston, is that how they went down? Councilman Olkowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Agerston? Yes. Okay, and uh, moving on to the city manager report, since Mr. Kiko is out, I'll read this on his behalf. Um, I'm going to have him update some things on here, but that's a different discussion. Uh, Public Works Department catch basin repairs. Basins have been marked, cleaned out with repairs starting the week of 719, which is today. Angled parking on Washington Street will not be feasible. Currently getting prices of painting the parking spaces and curbs to handicap spots and curbs in those areas. Dura patching will resume after catch basin repair. This includes the citywide street and alley work. Please call in potholes to the street department at 937-845-3058. Again, for the uh, record, 937-845-3058. Water Department Sanitary Survey, updating the number of private well locations to complete our backflow program. I'm just going to skip what it says about Adams Tower. Adams Tower is now complete and down. Um, Sewer Department says currently working on estimates to replace additional clarifiers with possible federal funding. Uh, road Report uh, 2021 Road Reconstruction Resurfacing Projects. Uh, Benbrook Phase 1 has been awarded to Sturm Construction in the amount of 290000 Reconstruction uh, meeting is set the week of 726. Reconstruction is currently slated for this fall. Grant was approved in the amount of $372. The city's matching <coughs> share estimate to be $59,000. Clark County engineer received bids for the street to be resurfaced. Now the cost to overlay Sunset, and these are the roads that we will be overlaying this year. Sunset, Cambridge Court, Deerfield, and South Scott between Madison and Linden is $99,324. Uh, 2021 current uh, funding we, we have now is $110,000, and that is slated for this fall as well. Uh, Madison Street School Demo, the demo has begun. Um, I'm just going to read what he has here. So the demolition contract has been awarded to Smith Wrecking in the amount of $163,000. As best of abatement is complete, the demolition is underway, is slated to take around two to three weeks. The engineer estimate was $226,202, and the city share was only $52,302 of that. Uh, bricks will be placed outside of the fenced area for citizens to get. And I do know they started placing those bricks down if they don't have an additional pile out there. Um, you gave that update last week, right, for me? Yeah. Yes. They're, they're ongoing on those, so I mean, as they're cleaning the bricks, they'll continue to put the older mm -hmm. section out. So if there's not any there now, this thing will be we will be there. <laughs> okay, and that is all for the service report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Sure. I had a citizen complaint mm -hmm. about a hole in the street in the front street. 
I went and looked at it. It's about six inches by about three inches, but it looks like it's kind of deep. Okay. Where was that? What? Tennyson? Tennyson and Tungsten. Okay. Uh, the citizen says the city council is pretty much worthless and doesn't do anything. So if we could get something done on that, it would be very great. A hole in the street. A hole in the street. Okay. It's not big. But deep. But deep. Not big, but deep. <laughs> deep. Details. Yeah, I'm going to detail that. Okay, so uh, I'll get that later. Okay, thank you. We'll get it right on it. Yes. Yeah. In regard to the uh, pricing on the painting of the parking spaces and curbs, the handicaps, and this, whatever happened to our paint sprayer? I'm trying to. I'm going to read where he said that. At. Where did you see that at? Like no parking curbs, getting pricing on painting. The, the uh, on Washington. What he means by that is getting priced to buy the materials. To buy materials. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and I'll clarify that with him. I don't think we're going to hire a company to come do that because we well, painted Main Street ourselves. Too. I think it means by how much paint and stuff we're going to need. Okay. Yeah. We're not. We're not out. For I feel time. better about that now. Yeah. Yeah. They've got. We've got our own strike. Yeah. We. Yeah. We, we got. Yeah. We, yeah. we do that all. The time. Gotcha. I was going to say, where'd you see that at? And I didn't notice that, but we're on the same page. We ain't outsourcing that. We're good. We can handle that. Well, Mr. Cobb called that to my attention. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good, sir. Good. I'm done. Well, uh, kind of on the same subject. Are they? He's only focusing on that main block, then, right, where Mr. Graham and um, you know the, the, that one section in between. 571 in Washington. The core downtown, right. the Washington, yes. That Would it be beneficial for him to look at any of the, you know, the parking further up in front of um, CDS and maybe even on Washington, too? I'll run, I'll run it by him, but I, I, this is for angles, like, to just put parking stripes there. Angles? He's going to go. No, we looked at angled on Washington. Right. It wasn't feasible. Right. So now he's just looking at moving stuff up and around. But sometimes when you put striping on main roads like that, you actually lose spaces. And I know he's discussed that at one of the meetings. Like, he, we thought about going down and, and putting parking spots measurements on Main Street. Right. But he said he hasn't, he's going to do the calculation because sometimes you actually lose space enough. Right, right. The, the only space. thing I was thinking is it may benefit because sometimes you'll see where you see two or three cars where they're parked just that weird way where there's a half a space that was wasted. But if it was marked, you would get as much, you know, optimized amount of space as possible if they were clear of the mark. Yeah, it's more just efficient much. use of the space. Thank you. More efficient use of the space. Mm, go either way, because still people go park outside. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I'm trying to argue that. Um, but we'll get with Howie. It's his, it's his call, his department, and then we'll report back to council. So yeah, my my question is, if he's if he is looking into that option, is he looking just at that one block? Or is he going to look you know, around the corner also on to 571 and, and down by CVS and that? Is it just that? One? I don't know if it's positive to hit that one block. It's just all these counselors that are talking about. Okay. But we can definitely run it by and see mm -hmm. what his opinion is. Okay, thank you. So basically, striped parking along CVS and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, just what it, I mean, asking him would be beneficial to look at the next block down and maybe even on 571. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure, um, no problem. Absolutely. You know, parking seems to be a hot topic sometime in the summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know it what does. I mean. You know what I mean? I know exactly where you're going with that. <laughs> so, yes. And then we'll take the street, the paint off the street. Yes. <laughs> Permanent fixtures. Another one we we discussed, um, I think in the work session, street sweeping and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I know the city has some some old equipment back behind the hut back here. Uh, is there any chance that we can get that new cleaned up, scrapped, and get some money for it? The old street sweeper? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You need to spend there for right I thought it was supposed to go on good deals a minute ago. He, he, he was in contact with. with was it? Deals. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's in the process. <coughs> okay. Right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. We're good. Thank you. All right. That was a, that was All right. So moving on with the planning and zoning, uh, the city manager report, our planning and zoning report with Mr. Hutchinson. So in zoning, so far in year to date, we have 16 received zoning outlets. This has the last one state was never passed on up. 16 received, 55 of those have been approved. Uh, in code compliance, uh, we are 
298 total violations per year. Um, and keep in mind, we have our numbers are down uh, in, in a lot of the areas because we're down to one code compliance officer now. Uh, so uh, he is definitely keeping busy, taking on the whole city. Um, so he is uh, uh, keeping up with it, though, doing a uh, very good job. Uh, we were at 598 different types of uh, code uh, activities. That's communications, inspections, and re-inspections. Economic development, community development, uh, tool lending center. We now have new software that tracks it, tracks what we have, we can preserve it. Um, just within the last few days, you can now go on our city website uh, to the tool lending page, and you can actually click on reserve a tool, and it will bring up a full catalog with pictures of every single thing that we have. Uh, and you could actually reserve your time of day. It only allows you to reserve it if it's available and also if, within the hours that we operate. So it's, and that will come directly to us and we hope to meet you at that, tent, at that time. Um, and we're electronic now, so we no longer will have the paper contracts, everything's signed with your finger on the iPad and, and, and you'll be fine. Um, so excited about that, getting that going. Uh, we also, uh, just last week, uh, We've got our GIS uh, software online, uh, so I've already kind of started thinking around making some maps and, and, and seeing the features that we have, so uh, I can definitely say here in the near future you'll start seeing some maps popping up in probably all of our different uh, departments uh, that we could create, something that we didn't have before, so uh, we decided to get that going. Um, Comp plan, we kind of discussed that a little bit in the work session. Um, really, to, you know, to, the meat of that is going to be the direction uh, from you all. So uh, there are, are some things that we can get going and can get planning, but after your guys' meet you know, next year, we'll definitely uh, kind of start combing that in. Uh, continued planning projects, Pike Creek demo. Uh, I believe they may have been out there today, if not today, tomorrow. we are doing asbestos testing on that property, so we can get that uh, tore down. Uh, comp plans up, update uh, still going. Uh, our partnership with the uh, with Park County on the CBD grants. Uh, still waiting on our code compliance truck. It's still sitting in that field, looking nice and pretty and new. But uh, without that computer chip, it's just going to sit there. Yeah. So I, I haven't uh, I haven't got any updates from them. So I was just, just waiting. waiting. That's all I got. I don't understand any questions. Council, any questions for the planning department? Mr. Grimm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but maintenance of sidewalks and curves are responsible for some of these property owners. Correct. Does that fall under what? Exterior maintenance? Uh, we have, I mean, we actually have specific a, a code section that, that deals with that. Um, that was a project that I really wish to have started this year when we had two code officers. Um, to really be able to effectively do that is, is to get out and just walk on the sidewalks and street. Um, so uh, it is, it's a project that's not started yet this year. Um, we really need to come up with a plan, uh, and even with your guys' help and advice, uh, or guidance here, um, of what we really so this is going to be a costly, costly, costly for this property owner. Uh, and a lot of our sidewalks are in rough shape, so it could be a lot of people take a big hit. So uh, once we get them identified, then the next step would be to see how we want to move forward with that. Okay. Thank you. Because that was at the night market Saturday, and it's some of the sidewalks are. Yes. Yeah, so what we, what I would like to do is, uh, and I could get with uh, Mr. Pico, is, is come out, come up with a, like a rating, you know, a, a rating so we go out there and, and prioritize the, the really bad ones, uh, you know, the ones that are like stairs. You know, obviously, tackle those first and then work our way backwards. So uh, that is definitely something that uh, is, is on my mind, uh, and I've already started. 
it means a big job for tax. So it's, it's definitely an honor. So. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grimm. Anyone else? I just have uh, one, Mr. Hutchinson. Uh, I brought it up a while back. Twin Creeks, the sidewalks out there, uh, you know, the citizen who brought it up the over here, the people who are buying like an extra lot and they have a bigger problem, but they're not putting the sidewalk in it. And refresh me, I can't remember. Is that, I should have looked at it because I just thought about asking the question. So I apologize, I'm not 100% no. ready. Is that, is that our responsibility to make sure that they put a sidewalk in if they buy the property? I, and I think you'd said it depends on if it's been grouped as one property or if it's still split, but they own both. Yeah, so one issue I was finding when I was doing some research on that is, you know, when that was approved as a development, because that was approved in those, uh, in those uh, specs were written for that DUD, those were individual lots with individual structures on them. Right. Now that it's kind of fallen apart and they're buying multiple parcels now, it's, it's, it's kind of outside of those specs now. So I, I still got to look a little further into it legally what we can do. Um, I know, let's just say everything was the way it was supposed to be and we just have a vacant lot that's not for sale. We, we could force them to put a site Because there's nothing wrong. But if they put, say, a tool shed or something on it, is that the kind of Well, fun? so in that case, no, they couldn't. They, well, they wouldn't be able to put any accessory structure on that other property. Now, if they combine those lots, then yes, then they're going to be responsible for for putting that, uh, for putting the site up there because that is now, that two lots is now one lot and requires the site. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'm just thinking. <laughs> Thank you. The sidewalk situation is he's describing what's in the covenant. We have our own design standards that we can look at or with our own codified ordinances. They're not, they're still subject to, to the code. So yes, in their covenants, it's, it says once it's improved. But we have our own design standards when it comes to our sidewalk and streets that they're still responsible for. So let's look we'll see if we have, you know, have you seen a complete streets policy or anything that we have? Not for that, okay. But we'll, we'll look. Yeah, I mean, what it is is just for those of you who are listening or wasn't here when I brought up last time, citizen that lives in Twin Creek, some of these people are buying a second lot. And then when they want to go on the walk at night, you know, they bought this lot, but they didn't put a sidewalk in. So we got these, you know, gappy sidewalks. Um, you know, and if they're supposed to be putting a sidewalk in after they bought that lot, then I think it would be nice if the city makes sure that they are complying to those codes and rules. So if it's unimproved, they don't have to put in a sidewalk. Well, we're going to look. We'll look more. You have the covenants of Twin Creeks. Yeah. The Twin Creeks covenants is I'm going to move there. I'm going to agree to have siding on my house that matches my accessory structure. Right. In their covenants, it says once it's improved, you got to have a sidewalk within six months. We have our city codes that detail our design standards that state you have to have sidewalk. So just because they're in an ARPA and they have their covenants, they have to follow those covenants. Yeah, siding, that's the match. But they also are responsible for following the city codified ordinances too. So we can get them on our codified ordinance that says sidewalk, you gotta have. And that's what we're gonna look, that section of our codes. Because their covenants, they're not meant for the whole city. They're yeah. meant for that little portion up there. Um, so we're gonna see what other angle we can have our legal authority to go on. Thank you very much, sirs. Mm -hmm. right. Anything else for Mr. Hutchinson? All right. Thank you, sir. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. Well, thank you. Good job, Mr. Hutchinson. Appreciate your time and expertise. And we'll move on down with the city man manager report under informational items. We have mayor's court as the first bullet point. Uh, so we've actually knocked out a great, a great deal of legislation for the mayor's court. And we got some uh, ones in the past. We got ones introduced. We got ones moving forward and we voted on. But we do still have a few to go. Um, we're going to have one that establishes the fine schedule, including court costs, supplements to startup costs, and advancement from the GM, uh, startup, advancement of the funds from the general fund to the mayor's court fund. Um, I'm sorry if I didn't say that right, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, first read of that is we would prefer that to be August 2nd. Uh, however, we do got some big projects going on, so I do want a buffer of a council meeting just in case Ms. Harris or myself gets insanely busy again. So either the second or 16th will, will have the, hopefully what will be the final legislation pieces for that mayor's court. And let me just say this, it's been a challenge, so thanks, because I think it's gonna be awesome in the long run, but I've been challenged, Ms. Harris has been challenged, and again, she's knocked it out of the park to setting these funds up. 
So it has been a great learning experience for everyone involved. Um, so hopefully we get the results that we get out of it when we actually get it up and going. I think at the last meeting we had some little confusion about the levy dates that I had sent out to council, discussed, and then the fire chief kind of chimed in, I think, confused, uh, uh, just uh, multiple people on it just confused it. So the health levy and fireman's levy, they both collect through the end of 2022, as I stated. So what it meant by putting that on the ballot is it stops collecting in 2023. So we're going to want a at least two shots for these to be renewed in 2022. So yes, yeah, still both of your ballot measures will be on in 2022. And that was when we we're talking about you guys debating on putting a bond issue onto the pool or not, about strategically when that's going to be. So we do know in 2022, we're definitely going to have the health levy uh, renewal. And that may be a slight replacement because Mr. Patterson, our health department, Mr. Popper, we don't know if we're going to leave it around, leave it alone this cycle or not. However, it's the fire and EMS one, which me, me and Mr. Uh, fire Chief have our meeting with you guys that we're going to sit down and turn and truly be strategic about it. But that's what we currently have coming up. Um, the rest of the levies that we have on, they are continuous. They're just there. So we don't have to put those on every time. Uh, but we'll talk about strategy a little bit later on with these, with these particular uh, pieces. Upcoming legislation for council, we got some big things coming in August. Uh, the capital improvement plan that sets the budgetary process up. Second step of the budgetary process, pass the tax budget. We'll give council a chance to look at that. Um, that's going to be our capital purchases uh, for 2022 and 20, uh, between 2022 and 2026. Every year in August, we have the street lighting assessments, the grass abatements, the noose abatements, utility buildings. Um, we're also doing a codification numbering update. That's going to be in August. Um, and also updating our employee generally code section. Um, in August as well. So lots of legislation in August, um, but we're good. We can get through it. Uh, we, get, we all work well together when we have all these big legislation pieces. Uh, coffees and donuts. Thank you to everyone who came and insisted. It was a great little time. Mm -hmm. It was a good event. We had quite a bit of donuts that, you know, got sent to uh, appropriate places, but what a great time to just get together and not, and just kind of just informally just have a discussion. So it was awesome, awesome time. Sunshine Law Training, I did attend that on July 14th. Uh, that was strictly online. And if any more classes, either online or in person, are available through their website, I will send them off to council so then you guys want to kind of take that course yourself. Um, policy review for council, we have the Veterans Banner Policy. I'm asking for a motion to approve pending discussion review tonight, but it sounds like our general discussion earlier, everything is generally okay with it. Um, if I make any more minor tweaks to it, I'll send it to you guys back out. If anything is drastic, we can do its first one in uh, August. We're not going to implement it this next year anyway, so we've got plenty of time. But I do think it's a good starting point to start off with. Um, and the rest is the ongoing projects list. Um, so if you guys want to, I'm not going to go read every one of those, but if you want to ask anything about specific, uh, let me know. Um, and just so you guys know, we started giving our major projects to council. <coughs> Kind of twofold so that they see what they're doing and they stop adding more projects to us. And let me tell you, it worked. It worked. Okay. That's all I have. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions for the city manager? Did you need? Did we need the motion for that tonight? On the, the veterans banner. You know, let's. Uh, since it's not in a rush, because I need to go back. I did that thing super quick. Tweaks, yeah, yeah, I want to do some more tweaks. I think we. I got to enough guidance from you guys okay the, the, the second the third and fourth page is still not formatted correctly so i'd rather get that done mm -hmm. um but the beef of it there the language of it there shouldn't change much. just maybe the way out okay. yep and i did skip american rescue plans funds on here so i was just kind of using miss harris uh, what she said about the dumps and all that stuff we get our first one coming up and then we'll get another one a year later um and again thank you for um doing that well, that's all I have. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. All right. Thank you, sir. Anything else for the city manager? <coughs> all right. Moving on. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, as always. We Thank appreciate the effort. Yes, yes. Uh, moving on to comments from members of the public. If anybody has any questions, comments, feedback, and all the above, ask you to go to the podium. <coughs> Try to keep it around five minutes. I'll leave your name and address for the directors. Anybody do it. All right. Good evening. My name is Chris O'Reilly. I live at 111 North Main here in New Carlisle. I've been here for six, 58 of 60 years. Oh, wow. 
My company is Nebula Solutions, and I know that uh, I had sent an email to uh, Mr. Bridge uh, back before COVID, and this was concerning the phone system when I knew that they were gonna, or they had planned to move the city building into the uh, corner of Maine and Washington. Mm -hmm. Apparently that has gone by the wayside because it is now a substation for the deputies. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know the phone system that's in the city, the current city is old, it's antiquated, and it's not if it's gonna blow up, it's when it's gonna blow up. Okay. So my company does um, consulting when it comes to, uh, everything is moving to the cloud, so all the new phone systems are cloud-based, mm -hmm. uh, run on the, the existing data network. So we can provide multiple quotes from multiple different providers we can still do premise-based systems, which is uh, phone systems still have a box in the back, uh, but really everything now is, is computerized, so the phones know how to get out on the internet and how to find the mothership, so everything is out in the cloud. Uh, this provides you know, simple services to some of the most complex stuff that you'll ever see. Um, we do voicemail to email. Um, we have the app. Everybody has an app for everything, but it's an app that you can put on your cell phone, you can put on your tablet, you can put on your iPad, which allows you to make a phone call from your network and looks like it comes from your office. So you can be sitting at Panera Bread and McDonald's <laughs> and Hothead Burrito, and yeah, when you make a phone call, it looks like it's coming from the city. So uh, Nebula does that at no charge. Uh, we look to, you know, we, our providers pay us um, but all that done, all that service work, all the, um, the consultation work is all done, you know, free of charge. Uh, all we ask for is a letter of agency on your letterhead, and that I can provide you a copy, and then copies of the phone bills. You know, phone bills, internet bills, you mentioned Zoom, so it's probably a service that you're paying for. Mm -hmm. Some of these companies will pay, I mean, some of these companies are providing all that rolled into one. So we have, you know, we work with about eight different providers and a couple of different um, uh, companies that do premise-based systems. But like I said, even the companies that are doing pr uh, providing premise-based systems <coughs> look like they're coming from the cloud. So it's eventually, you know, within probably three to five years, you're gonna be buying something new anyhow, okay? Because everybody wants to come in from the cloud. I have business cards I can leave with you if you'll uh, if you just give us the opportunity. You know, I'll be honest with you. Our phone system, we actually just replaced within oh. the past five years. Um, we now have Avaya. 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 Avaya phone. Yeah. Now we're on a lease for those. I do believe the lease comes out, but our regular phone lines are just the AT and T. And I did look at voice over IP when I was looking at redoing this. I'm okay. all about technology and, and how we can do things better. Unfortunately, we don't have very strong internet, and what we would find is. You know, on certain days, we have a lot of data going on because we all know the internet is like the highway. Um, the more people got on, the less speed you get. So for us to do that, we would have to really beef up our internet speed. Um, and I'm not too familiar with what, what advances have been done in the past five years. Mm -hmm. and this is going off past information. Um, but I have some other people that own these businesses and voice over IP is really tough. Because what happens when the internet goes down? And our internet does go down at times. It goes down everywhere, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's not wrong. What happens is because the system is out in the cloud, you can make changes. I can make changes to your to a phone system from here. I had to get a bigger phone because I couldn't see it from the little phone. Yeah. But I can program from the side of the road. Mm -hmm. um, if there's if there's an outage, you know, if there's an outage, you can immediately jump into an auto attendant, and instead of sending it to an extension number, you can send it to a cell phone. Yeah, that's what we had now. So yeah. With, with an app, a I can send it to a. I can send it to an iPad. Sure. Because you're, you know, as long as you're connected to, you know, to the public network, uh, and you talk about changes that have been made over the five years, you'll choke mm -hmm. because the amount of, you know, the amount of things that have happened over the last five years, especially if you're on a lease, if that lease has come to term, that's something that we'll look at. Same way with uh, with internet speeds. You know, you have we have more than one provider here in town. You know, uh, Spectrum is in town. You know, AT and T is in town. So they have services that are provided here. The question is, is whether or not you're getting the competitive price. We use, we have, we use government service pricing. Okay. Since we're a government, we, we're, yeah. But send me your card, because I don't want to take it on the time, but I would love to sit down with you and talk okay. about what's changed in the past five years. Yeah. The technology and personal facts that we have with all that stuff, and we're going for the new phones that we have. But you say you're on a five-year, you're on a five-year lease? Something like that, five or six. It's coming up pretty quick. Okay, I was going to say. Phones, because it's actual phone. So our lines are 18 feet. 
But even that, I mean, there's, you know, anymore, we don't use lines. No, you want because, to no, when it goes, and as I say, and that's, those are, the, yeah, those are, the, those are the costs that drop out the bottom because if you're, you know, if you're paying, you know, we've got places out there that are paying anywhere from 39 to $69 per line. Mm -hmm. And AT&T bill average around, around 2000 month, out. around that. Yeah, we need hundred. to talk. So, yeah, because yeah, so, yeah, give me your card. I want, I want to turn this into a, a cold okay. call sale, but I would love to sit down with you. Yeah. Like I said, when I, when I saw the city built, the city wasn't going to use that building. I mean, that was, that was always my, my, <laughs> my hope was that we'd, yeah. we'd be right down the street. Sure. So, all right. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All right. Moving on to spend your reports for the night. We'll drop down to resolutions. Mr. Burner, if you would, please. All right. We have um, resolution 2021-13R, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on August 2nd, 2021. A resolution amending resolution 2020-21R, the capital improvement program, for the city of New Pillow, Ohio, for additional capital purchases. Ordinance. All right, moving on to ordinances. We have ordinance 2021-22. This was introduced on July 6th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the registration of the New Carlisle, New Carlisle Mayor's Court with the Supreme Court of Ohio and other state government offices and the filing of any related and necessary reports. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Ms. Mankowski. Okay, so the explanation of this, sorry, I was taking notes. Explanation of this legislation piece is to uh, establish some funds, uh, some various issues. Oh. Sorry, the purpose of this ordinance is to register the mayor's court with the appropriate relating reporting agencies. Thank you. Thank you. And again, Mr. Bridge, it's all it's all running together now. Uh, thank you to, to you and uh, the team who's been working on this. <laughs> as you stated earlier, I'm sure it's been a very interesting experience. So thank you. Yes, Council, any discussion for the vote? Well, when you're ready, please. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. That's accepted 5-0. And this next one after the read, I believe we're just going to let it ride. Uh, make a motion to remove it and add it to the next meeting. Okay. I'll move. Motion by Mr. Grimm, a second by Ms. Eggleston to the remove it and add it to the next meeting due to the lack of council members available. Yes. Remove. Call. Yes. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That's accepted 5-0. Yeah. All right, we have Ordinance 2021-24, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on August 2nd, 2021. And Ordinance Employing a Magistrate for the New Carlisle Mayor's Court. Ordinance 2021-25, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on August 2nd, 2021. And ordinance employing a clerk for the New Carlisle Mayor's Court. Ordinance 2021-26, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on August 2nd, 2021. And ordinance replacing a certain section of section 248 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding city policy. All right. Another business. We uh, before we, we will have an executive session tonight to discuss the claim against the public official. Uh, but before we go into that, is there any other business anyone would like to go over? Administration, anything? Mm -hmm. Business. Cameraman. All right, we're good. <laughs> so, okay, so we will be going to executive session, like I said, to investigate. Investigate a complaint against a public official. Oh, I, and I do not foresee any business taking afterwards when we come back to the regular session. Probably just come back in and we'll adjourn, I would imagine. So we will uh, move that we move to the executive session. Motion by Mr. Grimm to go in executive session. 
second by Ms. Hazel. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Uh, yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Motion to move to executive session passes 5-0. Just a quick five minute breather before we start. All right, we are back out of executive session. I'll move to go back to the regular session. Yes. Second. Motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Ms. Eggleston to go to regular session. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Mayor, Mayor on the move that we excuse Mr. Rosewald and Mr. Cook. Yeah, I think we need a minute to do so. And Mr. Rosewald. Second. Yep. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mayor on the move that we excuse Mr. Uh, you're excused. You're excused. In other words, I don't have to attend. <laughs> I got the first letter right, cut me some slack there. Yeah. And who was the second? Okay. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? I'm being excused. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, we have another one. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. 5 0. Council, any other business? Councilman Eggleston. Second. Councilman Eggleston. Second. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Okowski. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Accepted 5 0. Yes.